Thank you so much, Susan. And thank you all for joining us today. So the topic of the day of uh, this brief one-hour webinar is Security Requirements Engineering. Uh, we will only begin to touch this topic in the, in the brief time we have as it's a very, very broad and, uh, and complex subject. But the goal is for you to walk away with an idea of the artifacts that underlie the definition of security requirements, a basic understanding of how to think about designing security requirements and familiarity with a uh, model called the square process model for extracting and defining requirements in, in real applications. So with that, we will get started. We're going to begin with an overview of what is requirements engineering before we, we get to security requirements engineering. First, why is it important? Um, there are a number of statistics out that show there are exponentially higher rates of defects in systems that do not uh, invest, for whom the, the designers of do not invest time in defining and enlisting strong security requirements and functional and operational and safety requirements at the, uh, from, the, from the design, the beginning of the systems engineering process. There is an exorbitant cost to rework and address these defects after deployment of the system versus the cost savings that are shown from addressing these needs a priori from the design phase of the systems engineering process. So why should you care about requirements engineering? Because it is absolutely critical to the success of designing a resilient and robust system that performs in the face of uh, failure and faults. Um, so let's see. Requirements are the top causes of why projects go significantly over budget and over schedule, why projects often get canceled um, or, or reduced in scope because requirements were never defined that uh, specify the intended functionality of the system to, to guide a uh, structured software development process and systems engineering process. Development teams in the absence of software requirements lack metrics and measurables to test and validate their progress to, so they lack uh, quality applications. And products that aren't designed using security requirements are often not significantly used once they are delivered. So it's important to realize that elicitation of, of, of requirements, security requirements and otherwise, requires input from multiple stakeholders, not just software developers, but also potential users of the system and customers of the system. Uh, people who will be implementing it for other people to use as their risk model is affected um, and, and depends very much on uh, how the system is intended to be used. So this is uh, very, very important stuff. The, a, a concept we want to go over now is called software assurance. So what is software assurance? The level of confidence that software is free from vulnerabilities either intentionally designed into the software, accidentally inserted during the life cycle, and that the software functions in the intended manner that it was designed to function. Um, critical parts of software assurance include trustworthiness, which again ties back to reliability and confidence that the system was designed according to requirements that weaknesses don't exist and that the system is fault tolerant tolerant of failures and other environmental conditions that may introduce um, chaos into the operation of the system. Another critical aspect of software assurance is predictable execution, which again is very related to the previous statement that when software is executed, it performs as intended. There is often difficulty, we talked about in a previous webinar, uh, about the ability to have full knowledge of all the different states that exist that a, that a piece of software or any system can be induced into. So without defining security requirements, it is extremely difficult, if not impossible, to have a full representation of the state diagram of software, which means that is more than likely that states exist and can be induced to make your software behave 
other than how you intended, whether that's maliciously or whether that's to cause a failure. So software assurance is the goal of defining useful software and security requirements. The life cycle focus of software assurance looks like this. We're going to be focusing today exclusively on the requirements and acquisition parts of the software assurance life cycle. We're going to talk about abuse cases and misuse cases, and we're going to talk about artifacts. We will not get into the rest of the uh, architecture and design, testing validation, et cetera, the, uh, as that would take much longer than the brief time we have today. Um, so now to actually put a definition to requirements engineering. It is the process of establishing the services that the customer requires from a system and the constraints under which the system is intended to operate uh, requirements can be both functional and non-functional. Ergo, the functional requirements describe how a system is supposed to perform, what functionalities it's supposed to offer to its users and administrators. Non-functional requirements are constraints in terms of not necessarily functionalities that are offered to the user, but say design considerations and architecture choices that are not visible to the end user. So it's important to take into consideration both functional and non-functional requirements when you're designing systems, as functional requirements are going to be most important to your user base, while non-functional requirements are going to be most important to guaranteeing the resiliency and fault tolerance of a system, as well as the ability to know and have visibility over the state space that a system can be uh, introduced into. So um, that's what requirements engineering is. Now, what is a requirement? Well, a requirement, they, they can range from low level, very specific um, implementation details, say the software um, will provide the ability for the user to log into a portal using Shibboleth, or there may be a high-level abstract statement that says users will be provided the ability to log in. Um, there, uh, this kind of duality is inevitable as certain requirements might, right, might serve both a high-level abstract requirement and a very low-level requirement. Um, so these all lump into requirements. We're going to talk about this more. Um, here's the actual definition of what a requirement is. A statement in natural language that can be substantiated by other contextual information like diagrams of the services and components of the system and the operational constraints between interfaces and, and components within that system. So the requirements definition is typically provided for customers and, and is seeks input from those customers when designing a system, typically authored by, of course, the developers of the system. A requirement specification is a much more formal and structured document that details all the functionalities and services that a system is intended to provide. So the requirement specification is the ultimate contract, the formalization of the process of requirements definition and elicitation between the developers and clients. So it's stated here as a contract. You can think of it as a binding contract. When you enter into a software development effort, typically this is a um, critical artifact that is exchanged that uh, denotes and how the software development process is supposed to proceed. And the software specification uh, is, again, another much typically lengthier and also very formal contractual document between the developers and the customers that provides a detailed description of all of the, the functionalities uh, and artifacts of a system that provides enough contextual information for the system to actually be designed, so not just what the functional and non-functional 